Tesla recently reported blowout earnings numbers with extremely strong record margins, which analysts love to see. Gap earnings growth of almost 1,000% over last year and almost tripling from the previous quarter alone. Furthermore, Elon Musk reiterated that public sentiment for electric vehicles is at an inflection point, with EVs being the only way forward. This is extremely positive for Tesla being the leader in the industry, and yet, investor focus was shifted to Elon Musk stating that he won't be on as many future conference calls, and at the same time, the media made sure to spotlight Tesla's $23 million loss in its Bitcoin investments. Tesla stock remained flat the first day after earnings were reported and only moved higher near the end of the week. In light of the lackluster initial reaction, some bits of information tend to fall by the wayside and get lost in the frantic fire hose of articles that attempt to make sense of the financial results of a company that most people, not to mention professional analysts, have a hard time understanding to begin with. When Model 3 first came out, Elon Musk was sleeping on the factory floor. He described the production hell experience as excruciating pain. He stated many times before, and on the most recent conference call, that prototyping is easy, but scaling is hard. A single bring-up involves multiple S-curves for each component and process that all need to be scaled at the same time. If a single component is missing, the car can't be delivered. Tesla needs to scale up their stamping press to produce castings, everything from the car seats to chips from suppliers, painting the cars at a rapid pace, and every process may depend on one or more other processes, meaning there's room for thousands of bottlenecks to pop up. They need to ramp up incoming materials before they can build motors at a rapid pace and get employees and robots in line to put the motors in the vehicles, which need to be done alongside battery packs that need to be ramped up as well, and so on and so forth. This orchestration that Elon Musk helps to conduct is quite fragile, and the smallest thing to go wrong will cause delays or reduce production, as we saw with Model 3 in its infancy. This time, however, Elon Musk is taking it to the next level, ramping up two gigafactories at once, with tons of new technology, including new battery cells and packs. Model S and X also need to be ramped at the same time from their multi-year lows back to their highs. Tesla's AI for full self-driving is ramping with new supercomputers that are being built with Tesla's custom chips in preparation for wide customer releases. Who knows what else is going on behind the scenes with solar roof, mega packs, and other products that need to be scaled up. But each of these major products is made up of thousands of mini S-curves. The global chip shortage is the backdrop, and suppliers can't even deliver enough materials or finished goods. And we've seen this all cause delays for the Tesla Semi and Cybertruck into 2022. There's an insane amount of work. Potentially an order of magnitude more major projects, which makes the Model 3 ramp up seem like a joke. And so Elon Musk feels that he's responsible for all of these projects and for the company, of course. So it's no wonder why he's stressed out about the business. He's commented about how much glass he's been eating, but he's the type of person who wants to do the engineering work and doesn't want to be the CEO, never wanted to, because the CEO needs to deal with all of Tesla's drama, paperwork, shareholders, etc., which is a waste of time when he could be building new and useful products. So Elon Musk stated that he was going to appear less often on conference calls, which might not be what shareholders want to hear, but this time is better spent solving engineering or logistics problems. Now this setup works pretty well. When Jeff Bezos was the CEO of Amazon, he never came on the conference calls. So this is probably a good idea for Elon to reduce his workload and remain the CEO. Because not only does it save time to not have to show up on the call itself, but also the preparation time, if you think Elon prepares for these. And this is something that can be easily delegated to others at Tesla. The CFO, Zachary Kirkhorn, or Master of Coin, appears to be responsible for Tesla's Bitcoin investments. During the quarter, Tesla recognized a $23 million Bitcoin impairment, which the media loved to put in their headlines. First off, $23 million is a rounding error for Tesla, making a billion dollars in profit this quarter. The accounting rules are antiquated and require that Tesla update the value of Bitcoin on their financial statements only if it drops below its purchase price in this case but it's not marked up if Bitcoin prices go up unless Tesla sells. Since the quarter ended, Bitcoin has moved up significantly, but that won't show up as a gain next quarter. 
I think that Bitcoin is currently not related to Tesla's core business and acts as a distraction and a way to make headlines. But investors didn't seem too impressed with Tesla's overall growth, despite gap earnings up 920% and non-gap earnings up 230% over last year. Some even went as far to say that Tesla had easy compares. Now they did over last year, but even over last quarter, Tesla's gap earnings were up 160% and non-gap up 56%. And last quarter was not an easy compare. Tesla sold even fewer Model S and Xs this quarter, under 2,000 actually, but given that these products, starting with the Plaid Model S, are beginning to ramp up once again and have extremely high margin, one would think that shareholders would be more excited about the back half of this year and the potential of this new product. Tesla doesn't need to sell that many, under 10,000 Plaid cars, to easily add an additional billion dollars in revenue. Now before I forget, stop using Yahoo Finance, stop using Google Finance, and have a look at our website, themarketisopen.com, where we have instant stock quotes and financial data going back 10 years, and it's all freely available. In general, Tesla's quarter was fairly spectacular given the headwinds at play. One of the biggest bearish arguments against Tesla stock is that it's overvalued trading at a thousand times earnings, whereas other automakers traded just five to 10 times earnings. However, while these other players are beginning to downsize, Tesla is growing at an extreme pace. Their price to earnings or PE ratio based on the gap numbers is now 350 times earnings, down by almost half after this most recent quarter, since Tesla earned a dollar and two cents per share this quarter versus 10 cents in the same quarter last year. The non-gap earnings went from 44 cents in the year ago quarter to a dollar 45, which brought the PE ratio down from 230 to about 170 times earnings. So the PE ratios are decreasing rapidly. While these numbers are still high, Tesla demonstrated the power of its earnings potential this quarter with over a billion dollars of profit. Now I actually tend to favor the non-gap PE ratio over the long term. Technically it's incorrect as it backs out the stock-based compensation expenses which are real. But as Tesla's profit increases over time and as the majority of Elon Musk's stock compensation plan gets paid off, the gap and non-gap will tend to converge towards the non-gap P.E. ratio. So while some investors are afraid of Tesla's high P.E. ratio, if Tesla keeps delivering these kinds of numbers in just a few quarters, they'll begin to look cheap on earnings. Now last quarter we learned that Tesla was substituting alternative chipsets and writing new firmware for these chips in a matter of weeks. However, Tesla now has 19 new variants of chips in the works, meaning they could be sourcing from 19 new suppliers. And because Tesla is able to update vehicle firmware through over-the-air software updates, which most other automakers simply don't have the ability to do yet, Tesla can fairly rapidly expand their supplier base and weather the global chip shortage. This will also have some advantages and disadvantages over the long term as we'll soon see. But these 19 new variants are not duplicates for the same chip. It's likely close to 19 different chips that are experiencing bottlenecks. Given that worldwide supplies are low to begin with, and Tesla is planning to further increase its vehicle unit sales, this will put even more pressure on the system. Having at least two suppliers for critical chips is important to relieve these holdups. As Elon Musk has stated multiple times, if a single component is missing from the car, the car can't be shipped. Now that Tesla has become a much larger company, it's important to invest in these new chips. Because at the same time, Tesla is also adding new production lines in Berlin and Texas, which will need to be stocked with components. If the suppliers are unreliable, then this initiative of having more variants will be beneficial not just for the chip shortage, but for the long term as Tesla expands. On the most recent conference call, Elon Musk paraphrased a question that was asked, which is why doesn't Tesla just build a semiconductor fabrication facility on its own? And so he responded by saying, well, that's not so simple. It would take 12 to 18 months at lightning speed, assuming nothing goes wrong. And I would add that what if in 18 months, the chip shortage is resolved and suppliers are back to normal and perhaps they have excess supply because of overcompensation as the semiconductor industry is well known for, then Tesla is stuck with a challenge of maintaining a factory that it no longer really needs. It ends up being a liability. Now Tesla has already proved that they can quickly rewrite firmware and take this route instead, which appears to have less risk. In the worst case, the original supplier can satisfy all of their demand and they have to throw away the code that they wrote for a new chip variant, which isn't a big loss. 
But over the longer term, this still comes at a cost in that Tesla needs to maintain 19 or more different chip variants. Separately, Elon Musk already called all the different battery types that the company has the Baskin Robbins for battery flavors with different form factors and chemistries. Though Tesla is looking at consolidating its battery types because it's simply too difficult to manage. However, for semiconductor chips, Tesla is heading in the opposite direction and expanding the number of flavors. So I think it depends how often the software needs to be updated to ensure compatibility and how Tesla manages the various chipsets, perhaps such as giving one complete set to Giga Berlin to use across its produced vehicles and a different set to use across its US-based factories. Overall, this is still pretty incredible how the team at Tesla is able to tackle these problems while other automakers don't move nearly as fast and can't rapidly adapt to changing circumstances. So let me know in the comments if you think this was a good idea for Tesla to add 19 new chip variants from new suppliers, or if Tesla should just take the time to build its own plant and manufacture its own chips. And what do you think Tesla's PE ratio will be next year, given the Model S ramp, Tesla's new gigafactories, and increased vehicle output of Tesla's current factories in the months to come? Please hit the like button and subscribe, we would really appreciate that. And a huge shout out to all of our patrons that help to support our channel. Your support helps us to continue to make great content. Thank you guys so much for watching.